Maurizio Pochettino in his press conference today was uber defensive. When I tell you he gave us the full truth on Romeo Lavia and said it's not me, it's them, he literally did that today. Then we get comments on Raheem Sterling getting defended by Noni Madueke, Cole Palmer being kind of upset, and I'll tell you why, I would be too. Ben Chilwell coming back injured, Chelsea have got 12 injuries, Pochettino hasn't seen anything like this in 15 years, and then we will cover the transfer rumours. The, the links with Bento from Brazil, and where Thiago Silva will be going next. It is sad, it is the truth, we're gonna break it down, we're gonna get into the little details, you're going to enjoy it because you clearly made it this far. So all I ask from you is, number one, subscribe to the channel because it's the easiest thing to do and 60% of you still aren't subscribed. So you watch it, you watch it to the very end because my retention is actually sick yet you don't subscribe, doesn't make sense. So do that right now and then hit the like button if you already watch the channel because it's the simplest way to support the channel. Let's keep it stepping. Look, I wanna get the transfer windows out of the way because then we can get into the press conference and the preview for tomorrow's game, uh, for Saturday's game. And the reality is we have got a little conundrum in our hands and nobody wants to admit it. Petrovic is a very good goalkeeper. He's 24 years old. He's really developing at a quick rate in front of our eyes. He can collect crosses. He's a good shot stopper. He's very old school. If this is 2003, we don't need a new goalkeeper. However, it's 2024 and your goalkeeper kind of needs to be competent with his feet. Petrovic is not that. Petrovic is, well, I'm in doubt, I'm booting it long. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I kinda like that. Then we've got Robert Sanchez. Robert Sanchez was third choice backup at, he came to Chelsea, started in goal, and I told people I wasn't happy with the signing, and people said, you know what, you're being too harsh, he doesn't make mistakes. Well now, I don't know a single Chelsea fan that wants him in goal. And the reality is, Chelsea have been looking at another goalkeeper, and reports in Brazil are coming out that it's Bento. Bento has been the number one Brazil goalkeeper this international break, he's 24 years old. Alisson and Edison did not go. Edison's injured, Alisson didn't travel, I don't know why, I don't understand. However, Bento is in goal. This keeper is very good with his feet. He's a decent shot stopper, he's tall, he claims the ball well, and that's as much as I know it. Literally, everybody that I know that watches Brazilian football or I talk to online, because you know, Twitter makes you good, like diversify your portfolio of friends. You start having friends in Brazil, everywhere around the world. You know, you start asking them questions. What's this person like? You watch the league. They're very positive. They're saying he's a good goalkeeper. This is one of those where the closer we get to putting in a bid and the more rumors that pop up, I'll do a review on him. I'll actually watch the player and give you guys a good breakdown. But all I wanted to say is we're linked with him and I fully back him. A quick one regarding Thiago Silva because we have finally got confirmation of what's happening. Reports in uh, Brazil are coming out that every week he's having phone calls with Fluminense. Fluminense's owner is trying to secure that permanent move for Thiago Silva at the end of the year. Look guys, Chelsea aren't giving him a new deal. No matter how much I want them to give him a new deal, I think ever since Bella Silva's comments and the fact that Thiago got dropped onto the bench, we haven't seen him regularly. He comes on to shore up the defense, he plays in the middle of the back three or in a back four, and it's one of those things where Thiago does not start games anymore. And it's frustrating, but it's time to move on. Thiago is meant to be there almost like an anchor to teach, an anchor to play one or two games, not to play as much as he was playing at the start of the year. It was actually horrible to see him struggle and then people point the finger at him as if he's not 40 years old. Like, let that sink in. 40 years old and people want him to play big boy Premier League minutes. However, we know he's not getting a new contract and it looks like he'll be going back home to Brazil, to Fluminense, where he started his career. Now, let's get on with the press conference and the Chelsea versus Burnley preview. Maurizio Pochettino had a long list of injuries. I actually can't believe how long this list of injuries is. So initially, he said that he's got 10 to 12 injuries. They released nine names beforehand. Ogo Chokwu, eh, Lavia, which we know was injured. We knew Nkunku was injured. We know James and Fofana are out. We also knew that Colwell was meant to be out. I don't know when Colwell's coming back, we don't know clarity, but three new people have been added onto that. Robert Sanchez, for crying out loud, I don't know how what he done to injure himself. Chalaba, who finally came back and has been playing games regularly, now he's injured again. And then Carney Chukameka. I don't know what Carly has done, but those three have been injured. We didn't get no clarity on what's going on with them. We didn't get no detail on why they're injured. But 
We know that they are. On top of that, there are three players he said that he doesn't know if they're going to be playing. I suspect one of them is Badia Shile, but there is no confirmation on that. And the other two, Ben Chilwell and Enzo Fernandez. And this is absolutely ridiculous. Pochettino's words, not mine. This is the worst he's ever seen it in 15 years of coaching. Now into the details, because he spoke about Ben Chilwell and he spoke about Enzo Fernandez. He said Enzo's on a flight back. We're going to see how he retali like, retaliates through the changing of the time zones and how he's going to feel. This makes total sense. Ben Chilwell is an interesting one because... Guys, you know me. I don't care if Ben plays or not because I think Kukurea should be our number one left back. I think Ben should be on the bench regardless if, he, if he's fit or not. If he's unfit, sorry, right, you can, you're you not playing. Boo-hoo, you're not starting in my team. What I find interesting is Ben played both England games. If Ben can play both England games, but prior to that, Ben can't play for Chelsea in that Brentford game or comes on for a few minutes, what the hell happens how are we assessing these players in comparison to how England are assessing? Why is, is it that we have a higher threshold of you need to be fit to play? Or is it England basically are like, no, you're going to play through the threshold. Or when players come back to Chelsea, they just go, oh, I don't feel well today. I got a little boo-boo. I can't play. It's really confusing because... Ben played 290 minutes, or I think he played 70 minutes, and then he played a like he played 90 minutes the other night. Absolutely confusing, mind-boggling stuff to me. Pochettino got very defensive, and when I mean very defensive, I mean this was actually low-key uncomfortable to watch. Because if you think about it from a logistical standpoint, and this is exactly how I'm going to think about it, Pochettino first explained what happened with Romeo Lavia. He said, "Look, he signed with us with injuries. We signed an injured player." So I don't know how he passed that medical. Clearly, Chelsea were willing to sign him with injuries. Makes sense. Then he said, and this is where it gets interesting. He said, we've worked him up to his fitness and, and he was always training away from the group. He was very clear on that. Always training away from the group. Once he came closer to the group, and this is where it gets absolutely very interesting. He said he started training with us slowly. He was ready for Wolves. He didn't play. Then for Palace, he played. And then he got his half an hour. Then he got re-injured. And then he's been away from the group. And he was very clear on that. Then he got asked another question where it's like, but what's going on with him? And he was like, I don't know why everyone, I keep seeing people saying it's my training methods, but he's hardly trained with my team. So it's not me. It's not, not what I'm doing to them in training. This is worrying because this is once again what I said in yesterday's video. Evidently, this isn't just the Chelsea medical staff being crap. This isn't even just Pochettino's training sessions being crap. This could be deeper rooted issues. For example, the growth thing. And a lot of people reacted and said, you know what, you're talking rubbish. Guys, people's bodies change. We become bigger the older we get. So the joints start suffering and then start muscles start compensating because other muscles aren't developing at the same rate. I'm not a scientist, but I've read stuff like this does happen to players. And I don't think it's shocking that the players that keep getting injured for us are the ones that are young that have played so many minutes in prior. And now the buildup of fatigue is now impacting them. And Pochettino said, he's not a doctor, he can't explain it. So trust me, I'm not a doctor, I can't explain it. I'm very confused what's going on. Maurizio Pochettino also explained that Cole Palmer was a little bit upset because Cole Palmer went away. He didn't feel well for the first game, but for the second game, he wanted to play because he wanted to add a point to prove. But he also said, he spoke to him that, look, if you keep up the high levels of performance, the opportunity will come to go to the Euros. And I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. There are two ways we can look at it. We can look at this from Cole Palmer's standpoint. I'm a little bit bummed out because I want the best Chelsea representation going. I want James, Palmer, uh, Colwell all going to the Euro. However, the reality is, and this is the sad reality, Cole Palmer might have missed this chance because the what, the competition he has ahead of him, he had to play this these round of fixtures and he had to be sick because he's got Anthony Gordon's having a great season. Saka's guaranteed, Rush was guaranteed. I don't know how, but he is guaranteed. A Grealish is ahead of him. And on top of that, you also have Foden and James Madison that are considered as forwards. It's gonna be very difficult and it's meant to be difficult. This is the international team, do you know what I mean? It's a population of 60 million people. And the fact that you have to pick 25 to go, it is competitive. These are the best of the best that England has to offer. So it's gonna to be tough, but 
it, I hope he smashes it to the point where he forces himself into the team. This right here sat really well with me, I can't lie to you. Purely based on the fact that Noni Madueke apparently had an interview where Noni spoke out about how it doesn't help when people boo Raheem Sterling and it, people don't see what Raheem does behind closed doors. And it's exactly what I said and people started hitting me with, oh my God, if it's Sterling, you're always defensive. He is your favorite player. Oh. No, it's got nothing to do with that. Purely based on the fact that Raheem Sterling should not be getting booed by his own fans in a home game. In a game where he just got the assist. And then, more importantly, the guy's trying. It's not like he's not putting in effort. But Pochettino is very political. When I tell you he sat on that fence, it was absolutely beautiful to see. Poch does not want to piss off the fans, but at the same time, he wants to protect his players. And he said, look, at the end of the day, the fans need to support Raheem, but we need to understand that we need to do better. And I, I love this answer because he was like, it's un the way we're playing is unacceptable as a collective. Players aren't meant to speak out against the fans like that because it doesn't help. Fans aren't meant to boo because it doesn't help. He politely said it that way. And he was just very protective of both segments. And like I said, he played it like a politician absolute politician and for me it was very easy to see that this man is very hesitant about what he's gonna say because he's not secure in his role yet so it is what it is i think it's very interesting to see how he's talking at this moment in time and i want to see how this shifts because i think he knows he's not the fan's biggest number one fan the final bit of information that i think is very interesting is regarding the fact that Pochettino was like, look, we don't need to set targets. We just need to win the next game. And I think this is the way to do it. We need to win the next game and then 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 reassess. We got Burnley, Man United midweek. You get six points from these two. Then you go into uh, Sheffield and Everton. If we somehow get to 12 points, and I know it's a big ask because it's Chelsea Football Club and we don't do nothing easily. However, if we somehow do that, I promise you, the narrative on our season will be different. We will be closer to 7th or 6th, and people will be looking at Spurs and that little three-game fixture that they go back to back to back, where it's Liverpool, City, and what's it called, Arsenal. And we still have to play them. And at the moment, it's 12 points between us. In that period, we need to be perfect. But that is too much to ask for. Well, let's just take it one game at a time, and Pochettino's right. That's just my stupid brain looking forward and trying to manifest something that I don't think can happen. But it is what it is. Guys, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Now, if you want more Kafka's view content, I've got two videos for you guys. Video number one, it is literally discussing the whole situation about Victor Giocarez, his strengths, his weaknesses, and my verdict on the player. Video number two is Victor Osime, strengths, weaknesses, and my verdict on the player, whether Chelsea should sign him or whether this should be a move. These videos are new, they're exciting, you can watch them at any time. This is gonna be a new feature I do on the channel. Support it, share it with your friends. Keep watching the Kafka's You. Peace out, I'm out.